On Judgment Day, would you be innocent or guilty? Welcome to the Word of Truth broadcast. Brought to you by Christ Miracle Evangelical Ministries International, Christ Shalom Bible Center United Kingdom. On the Word of Truth broadcast, the truth of God's Word is revealed. The captives are set free, and yokes are broken. Just give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. We can open our Bibles to. We can open our Bibles to Psalm 7. The key verse we're taking is verse 17. Give thanks. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord Moses. The message version says. I'm thanking God who makes things right. I'm singing the fame of the heaven high God. The Amplified Version says, I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness and justice. I will sing praise to the name of the most high God. I will sing praise to the name of the most high God. Praise the Lord. Give thanks. Let's give thanks at all times to the Lord. Christmas is lurking down around the corner. Um, some people only remember God when it's Easter, Christmas, or maybe the New Year. But God wants us to give him thanks at all times. Thanking him for life. Thanking God for the air that we breathe. Thanking God for the shoes on our feet. Thanking God for the the fact that you can lift your hands, you can raise your voice, thanking God for everything that God has made. God created us and the Bible says that it was good what the Lord made. So the key verse is Psalm 7 verse 17. I'm thanking God who makes things right. God makes things right. Our lives were crooked before we knew God, but God is making our lives right. And we have a duty to sing unto the Lord. We have a duty to give praises and thanks unto the Lord. We have a duty to sing praises to the name of the Most High God. David is an example in the Bible. We all know that David was a man after the heart of God. David always took time to thank God. He took time to give fellowship unto the Lord, to sing unto the Lord. David is always, was always given reverence to God, celebrating God. When he went to war, came back, and there was victory. He didn't say the victory came because he was strong or he knew what to do, but he gave God all the glory. So God is telling us today, sons and daughters, that we need to take time to give thanks unto the Lord. Thanking God for you. Thanking God for yourself. Thanking God for the life that he has given unto us. Thanking God for the breath that we are taking. Some people cannot breathe without an, an aided machine or a, a oxygen. They need to be aided. They need to have an oxygen machine. Some people, when they sleep, 
um, maybe the heavy snorers or something or due to weight issues, they have to have an oxygen machine on all through the night so that they don't die in the process of their sleep. But God has given us good life. He has given us good health. He has given us everything that we need that pertains to life and holiness. We have a duty, sons and daughters, to thank God for your life. Let's stop looking back and thinking, oh, this has not happened, that has not happened. Some people made plans in January, some have left, they're no longer here. We are here, the fact that we have life, there is hope, amen? amen. We have a duty to thank God. The Message Bible says, I'm thanking, thanking, I-N-G is a continuous tense. It's not good enough because I thanked God last week. Are we thanking, it's a continuous tense. Thing that we need to do. Thanking God. I'm thanking God who makes things right. I'm singing the fame of heaven, of the heaven high God. Hallelujah. We have life. We're able to think. We're able to eat unaided. It is the doing of the most high God. Amen. Let's not take it for granted. Uh, three weeks ago or so, I wasn't feeling well. I, that was when I said, whoa, this is serious. You know, the fact that you see food and you say you don't want to eat the food. You don't even have the strength to eat food. But God has been good to you. He's been good to me. He's been good to all of us. You know, people may carve an idol and bow down to that idol, thinking that idol is the source of their life. No, it is God that has given us the breath that we breathe. It is God that has given us the ability to lift up our hands and be able to praise him. Hallelujah. If we want to see, sometimes we're, not, we're so quick to say, oh, God hasn't done this, he hasn't done that. But let's thank him for what he has done. There's a song that sings, that, that sings um, you know, count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you to see what God has done. From January, February, March, April, May, June, July, all the way to December, God has been faithful. Hallelujah. He's been faithful. When we call upon him, he answers. He's been faithful. He has given us the ability to, you know, some people say, oh, I'm being fed by my nine to five. No, if God didn't give you the strength to go to that job, you can't do it. But it is God that is providing for us. He is the Jehovah Jireh. He's the Jehovah Nissi. He's the Jehovah Elion, the most high God. Hallelujah. God is showed up in every area of our lives. There's no one here or no one listening that cannot say that God has not been good. God has been good. We need to tell God, thank you, Father, for being my Father. Thank you, Father, for being mindful of me. Thank you, Father, for your... The Bible says that we are... His righteous ones are in the palm of his hands. We have a reason to thank God today. We're counting down. Some people have gone buying Christmas presents and all that. It's, it's nice. But who is the giver of life? Who is the reason behind the season that people are celebrating? Some people want to do all the mundane things, everything, all the activities, but are denying the fact that God is the giver of life. God is the giver of all good things. God is the God that has made us see today. It's not the alarm clock that woke us up this morning. Some people set the alarm clocks and they're no longer here. It is God that has given us the ability. It is God that has given us the grace. It is God that has given us the enablement to say that when you wake up, you can roll out of your bed, lift up your hands. Some people woke up this morning and they can't move their hands. So we have a reason to thank God. Give thanks to the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. Praise the Lord. David was a man after God's heart. He understood the principles of giving thanks to the Lord. Amen. And may the Lord help each and every one of us in Jesus' name. So we should show a heart of gratitude. Amen. Show a heart of gratitude. What is gratitude? This is a strong feeling of appreciation, appreciating God for all that God has done for us. When we were conceived in our mother's bellies, none of us knew the process. When we came out, we didn't even know how we were going to be, you know, how we would eat or what would happen. But God has been the provider. God has been the supplier. God has been the refuge. Many years back, I was homeless. I didn't know where to sleep. I had no place to sleep. I was in a hostel. I couldn't tell them, oh, I don't like this place. Just somewhere to put my head and sleep. But we've woken up this morning. We've come from our respective homes. We're looking at the home. Oh, it's not big enough. It's not this. Some people don't have a shelter over their heads. They have nowhere to sleep. They're homeless. 
I remember many years back, I was homeless. I went to the council. They said, we're not going to house you. I started bawling and rolling all over the floor and saying, I'm not leaving here until you house me. They gave me a place in, in, in Gloucester Road, somewhere up in the West End there. I had no choice. I had to stay there. You sign in and you sign out. The day you forget to sign in, they boot you out and you're going to be homeless again. But God has been faithful. He's given us shelter. He's given us food. There's some people that don't have enough to eat. Some people have more than enough and throw the rest in the bin. But God has been faithful. He's been our refuge. He's been our provider. He's been the ultimate supplier. God never runs out of supply. Amen. He never runs out. He has more than enough in his bank. People, some people have to go to a food bank to eat because they don't have enough to provide for their, their families. We can decide, I don't want to eat this today, I want to eat that today. Many years back, I remember, all I used to eat was rice. Rice, 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 rice. I said to my mom, is there no other food in this house but rice? She said, if you don't want it, leave it. And I said, I don't want it. And I was rolling, I went to bed, I was crying. I was like, mom, come and beg me to eat. She said, when you're hungry, that's the pot, go and eat from there. But today we have a choice. I don't want to eat this, I want to eat that. Some people do not have those choices. Let's count our blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise us to see what God has done. God is good, hallelujah. There's some people that rely on a dialysis machine to, so that their kidneys are functioning very well. Years back, I remember I was in hospital, I was hospitalized, and this lady said to me, I'm complaining that I don't have a job to go to or I'm not at work. She said that in her situation, no employer can employ her because she's in liability. She constantly needs her dialysis machine, it's in a little pouch, and she has to take it everywhere. Without that, she will die. Our kidneys are functioning well. Our organs are very well. God is good. We have a reason to thank God. Amen. We have a reason to thank God. Let's not look at what, not, what God has not done. Let's thank him for what he is doing. What he's about to do and what he will do. Nobody knows what's happening in 2024. But God knows the end from the beginning. And the Bible says a grateful and a contrite heart. The Lord will not despise Let's be grateful. Hallelujah. Let's be grateful. If we open our Bibles to Psalms 95 verse 2. Psalm 95 verse 2 it says, Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Verse 3 says, For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Hallelujah. He's a great God and he's a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth and the strength of the hills is also his. The sea is his and he made it. His hands formed the dry land. Verse 6 says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Verse 7 says, For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if we will hear his voice, harden not your heart as the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Amen. God is good. God is good. He created the heavens and the earth. He said, let there be lights. Let there be, let there be, let there be a distinction before the land and the seas. At the mention of his name, we, you know, demons tremble. God is good. If God should open our eyes to see how many battles he has fought on our behalf. It's not because we know how to pray. It's not because we know how to fast. But God is a good God. God is a refuge and a fortress. He's a mighty God that we can stand on. We can stand on the word of God knowing that God will come through for us. We have a reason to give God thanks today. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Not complaining. Thanksgiving. Giving God praise. Giving him the ultimate accolade that he is due. God is the king of all kings and that 
the heavens of all. He is the God that says, let, let there be and there was. He is the God that is able to part the Red Sea. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're believing God for. But the same God that parted the Red Sea, he's available for us today. The same God that says, let there be light. And every darkness it, 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 it vanished at the mention of that command. God is able to part your red sea today. God is saying, hallow my name. Give me the praise. It's one thing that God, God can do everything, but the praise, he wants the praise. Give the praise, not from your lips, but from your heart. Let's give God thanks. It's an attitude. An attitude of gratitude is thanking God. Thanking God for you. Thanking God for your family. We're so good to complain. But when it comes to thanking, very often, you know, somebody said a, a statement that people are very quick to remember when you've done one wrong. If you've done 99 good things, but you fall on one, they forget the 99 and stand and stamp on that one. But God is not like that. When we come to him and we're repentant, he is a loving father. When we come to him and we hallow his name, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we think or ever imagine. God is not looking for lip service. He's looking for a heart that will worship him in spirit and in truth. We need to thank God. Amen. Thank God for your families. Some of us, we have families abroad. God is it's not the money we're sending that is looking after them. It is God. Let's be grateful. Let's be grateful. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. Praise the Lord. When we, when we give thanks unto God, we have a duty to keep his commandments. When we do what God has asked us to do, there's no, there's no bounds to how God can bless us. Amen. God, in, in the Bible, it says that uh, gratitude is mentioned 157 times. In the Bible, gratitude, being grateful, is mentioned 157 times. It appears more than thanksgiving. That's only there 72 times. So while we're thanking God, giving thanks, we must be grateful. Grateful, gratitude. If you have two children, you give one food, maybe the food is not enough. Another child may say, oh, mommy, daddy, thank you. Thank you. It's just two words. But some of us, we don't have the time. We think God is a microwave God. When I have the time, I, I will thank you. When I don't have the time, I'll put God on pause. No. Gratitude is an attitude. Gratitude is an attitude. We have to learn it. Good things are hard to learn, but we can learn it. The Holy Spirit can help us. The enemy wants us to see all the wrongs that God hasn't done, all the things that God didn't do. God is evil. God is this. No. God is love. God is peace. God is kind. Amen. The Bible says those that know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. So gratitude is an attitude. Be thankful so that your tank can be full with blessings. Amen? Be thankful so that your tank, your spiritual tank, can be full with blessings on high. Things don't just happen. David was always on top of the situation. Why? He had a heart of gratitude. He had a heart of thanksgiving. And he had a heart he loved God. When you love someone, it doesn't matter what they ask you to do. You will go all your way to see that that person is comfortable. That person is okay. Some of us, we say we love God, but we don't want to be inconvenienced. We don't want to be stretched. Anything that is outside my, my comfort zone, God, you, you understand. You know, we'll, do, we'll, we'll, we'll communicate later in the evening. No. Gratitude should be a lifestyle. 24-7, day in and day out, even when things don't go the way we want them to be. The Bible says in everything we need to give God thanks, in every situation, every circumstance, every season of our lives. There are so many seasons. There are seasons when it will rain. There are seasons when it will be sunny. There are seasons when it will be cold. There are seasons when the, the, the leaves are falling off the trees. 
But it doesn't matter what season we're going on that is going on in our lives. We need to cultivate the attitude that thanks God in everything, even when we don't understand. Father, I thank you. Jesus Christ always did one thing. He lifted up whatever the situation was to God, gave him thanks, even before he brought the thing to God. Where are we today? We're quick to say God is not good. We're quick to say God has not done this. We're quick to say God has not done that. But where we are right now, is it by our power? Is it by our strength? It is, is it by our reasoning? Is it by our own understanding? It is God that has been graceful to each and every one of us. We have a merciful God. If God should judge, all of us, judge us right now, who can stand? But God is merciful, amen? He's a merciful Father. If we open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. Matthew chapter 11 verse 25 says, At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Lord, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemeth it seemed good in thy sight. Praise the Lord. So there are times when Jesus gave thanks, amen. This is one of them. It says at that time, Jesus began to say, he didn't complain. He didn't mama. He didn't give reasons why, oh dear, oh this, oh that. No, he began to say, I thank you. He began to say, I thank you. Who is he thanking? He's making it specific. You are my father. Lord of the heaven and the earth. I acknowledge you. Openly, do we acknowledge God? Or do we only acknowledge him in the, in, the, in the secret place? Jesus said, I acknowledge openly and joyfully to your honor. Amen? To your honor. There's a song that says, I place you in the, great, in the, in the highest place, for you are the great high priest. And Jesus has acknowledged that here. He says, I acknowledge openly and joyfully to your honor that you have hidden these things from the wise and the clever. God is saying to us, we need to look inwards today. Amen. We need to change the way we give God thanks. How many times are we thankful to God? How many times? How many times does a child say thank you? You can't count it, it's innumerable. How many times do we thank God and really, really mean it? We thank, oh God, I thank you, I thank you. Let's take time to thank him. Let's worship our maker, amen? God created everything. He created the air, he created the birds, he created our lives. Let's thank him for what you have. Thank God for life. Thank God for the voice that you have that you can speak. Many years ago, I used to work in the oncology department, cancer department in UCL hospital. You see patients that come in without a voice box. The voice box, cancer has destroyed it, it's gone. So they have to put a tube in the, in the in they make an opening, put a tube, and the person is speaking through a machine. But you and I, we raise our voices, we can talk. We lift our hands, we can demonstrate what we're saying verbally and non-verbally. So on a daily basis, how many times do we thank God? It's not enough to say you can count it. If you cannot count it, that is where that is when we're on our way. Amen. Innumerably. It's not good enough that I thank God yesterday and I'm not thanking Him today. It's a it's on a, on a continuous continuously thanking. We're called to be thankful, to be grateful. On a daily basis, not once a year, not only when it's Christmas time, not only when it's Easter, not only when I feel like, even when you don't feel like it, thank God anyhow. Thank God for your life. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. When we thank the Lord, he will bless you. There's no one that praises God. There's no one that really loves God that will suffer. We need to decide today, what side of the fence are you sitting on? What side of the fence? Do you want to be the part of the group that are always murmuring and complaining? Or do you want to be a thanks, 
a thanksgiver. Do you want to thank God in every situation, in every circumstance? Even in the bad situations, there is a good message that God can bless us with it. Even in the wind, God is speaking. Even in the storm, God is speaking. God says he will, will not go through more than what we can bear. And he will always make a way of escape for us. We owe this to God. Give God thanks. We owe it to God. God can do everything, but he cannot thank himself. But if we don't thank him, he can cause the trees to thank him. He can raise the stones to thank him. So we should be grateful. We should be thankful at all times. Thanking God, even for the weather. Sometimes I'm guilty of that. Oh, the weather's bad today. Oh, uh. But that weather that is bad is, 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 is watering somebody else's farm. Is what is bringing a harvest for other people to eat. Sometimes, oh, it's too hot. Oh, that sun that we're complaining about is what is causing the, 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 the flowers to grow. Causing our clothes to be dry as we put them on the line. God created everything beautiful. Nature, you have the normal way to dry your clothes is to hang it and spread it on the line. But then we have tumble dryers because God knows that they'll, that, I mean, there will always be people that will complain. So you have a tumble dryer. But notice one thing, you put your clothes in a tumble dryer, you'll be shocked. You'll be getting electric shocks because of the, the I don't know what, the current or whatever is in the, in the static. But God's one, when you hang it on the line, there's nothing like shocking. It doesn't shock you. Because that's the way the Lord intended it to be. So God wants us to give him thanks. If we open our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is, the, this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all. Does, does, is that what is written in your Bible? A L L. All. Or does it say some? All. So, irrespective of the turbulences, irrespective of the wind, how it's blowing, or the, or the storm, how it's raging, the Bible is telling us give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God's will for us is, 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 is not of evil. The Bible tells us that the devil comes to steal and destroy, but the Lord has come that we will have life and have it more abundantly. So give thanks in all circumstances. Sometimes things may not go the way we, we have planned them, but it's not new before the Lord. It's not news for him. God knows what is hidden around the corner that we can't see. God knows what bends we need to take. He knows whether we need to turn left or we need to turn right. The Bible is telling us today, let's cultivate this. The Holy Spirit will help us. Give thanks in all circumstances. Whether it's favorable or unfavorable, whether it's, it's what you preempted or what you didn't even know was going to happen, God is telling us, give thanks. There's one lady, I, I, I learned so much from her life. Every time she's laughing, smiling, I was like, is she normal at all? She normal. The way she would dance, she would say, I'm dancing for Jesus. And when God started blessing this woman, it was unbelievable. She doesn't stress for anything. Once she said, they said she said one time, I think they even paid like forty thousand pounds in her bank account. She doesn't even know where the money came from. She's always happy, joyful in the Lord, joyous in the Lord. The Lord wants us to be thankful for His providence, thankful for His sovereignty. Jesus wants us to thank God for all that He has done for us. Amen. Thanking God for taking us out of the darkness and bringing Him into His marvel, bringing us into His marvelous light. God wants us to be thankful. God guided us here today. It's not because I know how to drive. It's not because I know how to maneuver. Some people have driven the same cars and driven it into a ditch. But God has fashioned our footsteps. He's ordered our steps. 
God has got us in his hands. Amen? God has got us in his hands. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, um, I think I saw like a, a, a what do you call it, like a, a label here yeah, that says relax, God is in control. When God is in control, it doesn't matter whether there's a turbulence, you know that you're in safe hands, amen? And God has got us together, he's got us together. God has our emotions in check, but God desires our praise, he desires our thanksgiving. He is worthy. God is worthy and he deserves all the praise. He deserves all the glory. It's amazing sometimes when we go through situations and then when we're given a testimony, some people don't even mention, I thank God for bringing me out and bringing me thus far. So I don't even remember. I've said it before. I've been homeless. Wherever you see a space in that place where you're going to sleep, whoever gets there first, that's where the person is going to sleep. You can imagine maybe 13 people in a room. One thing, it's one thing to be homeless. It's another thing, the, the, what's the word? The symptoms that come with being homeless. You'll be scratching boils. Whoever gets to that bathroom first is there. Sometimes you can't bath. There's no space. Wash your face and just go. Wash and go. Boils, you will see boils on your body from your head to your toe. You can't complain, you have a roof over your head. All sorts of people there, all kinds of people, and you can't complain, this is my space. There's no space, it's not your, you're just grateful to be, you're just opportune to be there. Some of us, we have a room, oh, don't, this is my room, this is this, 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 this. Let's be grateful, amen? Grateful. I remember many years ago, I met this lady. She said she can't remember the last time she slept on a bed. All she sleeps is at the edge of her kitchen table, just a little place she puts her head just to sleep. And she's living in the UK. So God wants us to be grateful, amen? To have a heart of gratitude. But the other end of the spectrum is when we complain. God doesn't like it. We murmur, we complain, we're not grateful. The Israelites were always murmuring and complaining. Oh, when are we going to get to this promised land? Oh, when is this going to happen? It got to a stage, they even said, take us back to Egypt. They're, because it gets to a stage, some people, when they're so prone in that problem, they don't even realize that there is a solution. The Israelites are saying, we want to go back to Egypt. A journey that should have take them, taken them 40 days. Took 430 years. Going round and round, round and round, round and round. The same place, the same. The enemy is not bothered about the activities. He doesn't want us to have a reasonable outcome. So God wants us to realize giving thanks unto the Lord at all times. Some people bow down and they're giving thanks to a piece of wood. A wood that was carved by a carpenter. And they bow down and they throw water on the floor, whatever the alcohol, whatever it is, and they say that is their God. We're not serving a dead God, we're serving a living God. So we have the upper hand in giving thanks unto our God. And may the Lord help each and every one of us in Jesus' name. For the sake of time, we can't go into it, but if we look at Numbers chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. It says the people were always complaining, complaining, always rendering their grievances, angry. You know, we need to, we need to decide today what side of the fence we're going to belong to. Are we going to be the part of the group that always murmur and complain? Or we're going to be part of the group is even with Father, whether I understand or I don't understand. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. And the Lord will help each and every one of us in Jesus' name. If we open 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 to 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 to 5 says. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. So it's not only that God is blessing us, he has given us grace unmerited favor, grace. 
It says, grace, sorry, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God, which is given you by Jesus Christ. Verse 5, that in everything you are enriched by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge. That in everything we are enriched by him. The God that owns the castles on a thousand hills. The God that his bank never runs out of money. The God that he doesn't run out of spare parts. Whatever needs fixing in our bodies, he's able to do it. And the Bible is telling us today that in everything ye are enriched by him. So we need to change our stories today. The songs we sing, does it align with what the word of God is saying? That in everything ye are enriched by him. In all utterance and in all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Praise the Lord. So we are enriched by him. What we profess and we confess matters. What did you say yesterday about your destiny? What have you been speaking over the past weeks about where God is taking you to? God wants a heart of thanksgiving, a heart of worship, laying prostrate before the maker, thanking God, even when we don't understand where God has taken us to. The God that is able to bring manna from heaven, he's still God. The God that is able to part the Red Sea, he's still God. The God that is able to clothe Adam and Eve in the garden without any fashion designers, God was able to do it. The God that was able to create, to, 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 to do surgery when, when, when God was creating Eve. Nobody knows the secret behind how God made her or created her. But that God is still God. Amen. And the Lord wants us to be thankful for his providence. Thanking God because he is my savior. Thanking God because he is my Yahweh. Thanking God because he is my deliverer. Thanking God because he is my strong tower. Thanking God because he is my arm, mighty arm in the time of battle. Thanking God because he is the strength when I am weak. Thanking God because he gives me the ability to wake up in the morning. Thanking God because he is my all in all. I place you in the highest place for you. You are the great high priest. Let us take the time to worship. Let us take the time to come to his throne. Let us not bring a shopping list. Oh, you haven't done this. Oh, you haven't done this. With what God has done, let us thank him. With what God is about to do, God can do a miracle in a split second. God can do the immeasurable. God can do the un 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 understandable, undescribable miracles. But it takes the heart of a grateful one. It takes the heart of gratitude. We can activate this today in the spirit. The Holy Spirit can help us. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The enemy always wants us to be down, 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 down downcasted, depressed, frustrated, angry. But God is saying, look up to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. When you look up, you don't see the problems that are down. It's not that they're not there. Change your altitude. Where are you seeking? Where, what are we looking at? Look up unto the Lord. When you're praising God, you can't be downcasted. When you're thanking God, you can't be frustrated. When you're thanking God, you can't be angry. When you're thanking God, you can't be disappointed. We need to decide what side of the fence are we today. No one can praise God for you. You need to praise God for yourself. No one can praise God for me. I need to praise God for myself. I remember many years ago when I was young. I don't know what my, the background for where I come from. You're not even allowed to go to church. Don't even mention G-O-D in that house. But I would, I would sneak out and go. Sneak out and go to a church. My mom will cover up for me when my father says, where is Helen? My mom will give him a story. But I noticed even at that young age, half of what they were saying in the church, I don't think I understood to what I understand now. 
But even if I had problems, at that little age, I had problems, I had issues, too much housework, too much this, too much that. No time to rest in that house. That was, those were my problems at that time. But when I got into church, what a joy, I can't describe it, undescribable. Don't get me wrong, I didn't have money for offering, I wasn't working, I was still very young, I was a teenager. I would cross the express road to get to the church, run, because I know that I have to get home at a certain time. But when I finish the service, oh my God, I can't, I can't describe it. I can't. It's like a joy that, if you, if you give me a million dollars in exchange for that joy, I wouldn't take the money. Undescribable. And that's the God that we serve, amen? Undescribable. At that small age, I, I had issues. Too much housework. Oh, when will I not rest in this house? Da, 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 da. But I go to the church, I come back. Oh, it's like I've, I've recharged my battery for another week or so. And that is the God that we serve, amen? God wants us to be thankful. Thankful. God wants us to allow him to have his presence in our lives. It's not good enough to say, ah, we worship you. Are we really worshiping God? When we worship him, we know. When we're in, the, in, in tune, we know. When we're tuned off, we know. We can deceive everybody else, but if we're deceiving ourselves, we, we're, we're the biggest fools. I can pretend to worship. I can pretend to love God. But the real test is when. When the storms are raging. When people are saying forsake God and follow Satan. When people are giving you the, the worst option. But in their eyes they think it's the best option. Which side of the fence will we stay? When you worship, when you love God, giving thanks wouldn't be difficult. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a burden. It wouldn't be, I've been forced to raise my hands. It's something you do without even knowing that you've done it because it's a lifestyle. When you're in his presence, nothing else matters. It's not that the situations are not there, but your God has taken over. God is going to sort it out. Whether you calculate, whatever you're calculating from now to the end of the earth, if you don't have the funds to sort it out, it's still there. Why worry when we can come to Jesus? Why worry when we can lay our burdens down at the feet of the Most High God? And God wants us to change our attitude today, amen? Even when we worship, we can worship Him better. When we praise him, we can praise him better. When we thank him, we can thank him better. God is not Father Christmas. We bring a shopping list. He has done prayer point number one, prayer point number two. God, but five and six, five and six, you haven't done it. Father, five and six, when are you going to do it? No. Let's worship him because we love God. Let's be grateful because we have a heart of gratitude. Thanking God with an intention, on purpose. Not because of what he's going to give us. Are we seeking his face or we're seeking his hands? When you love God, nothing else matters. All you want to be is in his presence. And God will help each and every one of us in Jesus' name. There's nothing, there's one thing that says, there's no place I'd rather be than to be in his presence. There's no place I'd rather be than to be in the presence of the Most High God. We are ambassadors of the Most High God. You should be a channel of, of worship, a channel of, you know, when people are feeling, oh, what's going on? When they come to you, the vibes that we give matter. What kind of energy are we carrying? We say we love God, but most times what we say is negativity, negativity, negativity. The Lord will help each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 16, verse 12. I'm not going to go there, but it says, I heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Grumble. 
after God led his people out of Jesus, out of Egypt, not Jesus, Egypt, towards the promised land, they spent their time in the desert complaining. As a result, their eyes were taken off the big picture and they spent more time in the desert than they should have. The promised land was waiting, but they were complaining. What good is it if you get to a fountain and you cannot drink water and you're just there? You, the person better just go back home. It's a wasted journey. The promised land was waiting right before their very eyes. But their eyes were off the most important thing. Grumbling and complaining. The lack of thankfulness. Not being thankful, not being grateful kept them from stepping into the promised land. Stop them from entering, entering the promised land. God wants us to take a leave and take a look at our lives today. You may have the title deed. If you don't buy, if you don't take a step and do something, nothing will, it's just a piece of paper. But gratitude will propel you forward, amen? Gratitude will propel us forward into the life that God has designed us to have. Once somebody is, a, is grumbling, there's nothing else you can say. The mindset is already made up. But a heart that is grateful will look at, even in the negative situation, will be thanking God. So gratitude will propel us into the blessings that God has for us. Gratitude will propel us into the breakthroughs that we have. Amen. We need to change our mindsets today. Amen. Giving God, irrespective of the, giving thanks to God, irrespective of the situation, irrespective of what others are saying. We need to be thankful in our prayers. Focus on what God is saying. Focus on the goodness of God. Focus on the mighty things that God can do and God will do in our lives. Thanking God for what he has done. Thanking God for break, waking us up this morning. Thanking God for all the great things he has done. This will stir up joy in our hearts. A joy that no man can, 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 can transpose. Joy that brings over, overflowing fruit. The fruit is the return, amen? The fruit of the thanksgiving. Once we thank God, there is a reward. Growing more to be like Jesus. Taking time to spend fellowship, fellowshipping in his presence. There is a time when the fruit will ripen. And that is the harvest, amen? That is the harvest time. The act of thanksgiving has to be consistent, amen? Being consistent, Little steps, little steps, little steps. You may not be able to do it for five, for five hours. Start from five minutes. Start from five minutes. Be consistent. Be steadfast. Mean what you say and say what you mean. Mean what you say and say what you mean. We can all bring a list of things. Oh God, this, this, this. this. But it must be thanking God all year round. A circle is 360 degrees. Don't stop in 90 degrees and say you've done it. You haven't completed the circle. Thanking God for January, February, all the way to December. Thanking God even in advance, your expectations will not be cut off. Thanking God even for the unseen. Thanking God even for the un un undescribable. The art of thanksgiving, consistent, be consistent in what God has placed in your hands. Be steadfast. The enemy wants to derail us. That's his job. But when your eye is on the goal, your eye is on the mark, you will not be derailed. Amen? Amen. Being genuine in your thanksgiving, in your giving of thanks. Thanking God all year round. Tick tock goes the clock. Tick, tick, tick tock. All the way, all the way. 360 degrees all the way round. Thanking God for those things even that you don't, even what we do not understand. Thankfulness in everything. God is good. 
Miriam was um, Moses' sister. She was an example of someone that would thank God. When the, when the Egyptians crossed over the Red Sea, she was thanking God, dancing with joy. Hannah gave a long prayer of thanks to God. 1 Samuel chapter 2, if you read Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 2, the whole of that chapter, thanking God for the petition of her son, Samuel. She said she didn't just request for any child. She said, God, give me a man child. And God was faithful. He honored that prayer. When the man of God said, are you drunk? Are you, what have you, what, what, what is this? She was focused on the goal. Even irrespective of what she was going through with her, the rival, the, the, the other wife of Elkanah. So we need, to, we need to realize that God is able to do all things. Let's be thankful. Let's be thankful unto the Lord. Amen. David always gave thanks to the Lord. Winning him, what happened? David was a distinction of, of, of victory at every time. At every time. In closing, let's take this home, giving God thanks. Giving God thanks at all times. Give God thanks in all circumstances. Father God, King of glory, we honor, we, bless, we praise you and we magnify your name. Thank you, Father, for Jesus so that showed us the right example on how to give thanks. Father, we pray that as we model that, Father, that our lives will be a living testimony. We give you all the glory. We thank you, Father, because you indeed, Father, sacrifice your only, son, only begotten son so that we will have life and have it more abundantly. Father, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you have done in the past, all that you would do and what you're doing right now. Take all the glory, King of glory. In Jesus' name we pray.